How does playing sports relate to everyday life? Everyday life is filled with a sense of competition, with a sense of doing your very best, of wanting to prove yourself. There's something I call the carryover effect. And I wrote about this extensively in my book, The Mental Side of Golf. The carryover effect simply means that how you live your life and manage your life is going to carry over into the, the, the way you play your sport. By the same token, the way you play your sport is going to carry over into the way you live your life. They're not separate. Some people believe they're separate, but I can assure you they are not. The reason is very simple. You're one person doing two different things, playing a sport and managing your life. So what affects one automatically affects the other. Does anyone in the room know what character is? I know there's a bunch of characters in here, but <laughs> do any of you know what character is? Parents, I, I'm asking everyone. What is character? It's like uh, who, who you are when nobody is looking. Who you are with them, that's a great definition. Very good definition. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Doing what's right, even if it's unpopular. Doing the right thing. Okay. How many times do you see that on television? Doing the right thing. Anybody? Have you seen it? Yeah. Have you? Anybody else seen it? I haven't. Have you? Where have you seen it? Where have you seen it? Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Okay. I haven't watched that program. The most recent. Good. Who is talking about that? Can an athlete learn leadership from sports? Yes. Does a Boy Scout have an edge in becoming a leader in life as an adult? I want to ask a question. Most times, adults will ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Have you ever heard that? Yes. Well, I'm going to ask you a little differently. I want you to think about this. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Anybody venture an answer? Who do you want to be when you grow up? When you become an adult? Let's ask some parents who they would like for you to be. Dr. McKeel, how would you like your son to grow up? Um, with good integrity and good work ethic. Mr. Gymnast. A kind and helpful person. A kind and helpful person. Uh, I was thinking integrity as well. Um, good character, uh, respect. Respectful and respecting. Okay. How important are those characteristics to becoming a leader? A leader. Not a political leader. A leader of people. Not necessarily political. How important is integrity and character and honesty and trust and everything else that's in your credo? It's in your uh, pledge at the bottom. How important is it? You have to have it for long-term success. You have to have it for long-term success. And if you don't? You'll have um, short-term short -term success, but you'll constantly be repeating and starting new things. But the long-term? Not without it. It won't happen. You may think it'll happen, because you'll be all uh, turned on by the fact that you achieved a short-term success, but long-term, no. And as you grow older, and I'm probably the oldest person in this room, you'll understand what I'm saying more and more, that success can't be measured just in short terms. It has to be measured over the long term, over the long haul, as they say. Playing golf is an individual sport. 
playing basketball is a team sport. What's the difference? Um, when you're in basketball, you speak up a little more. When you're in basketball, you have to care about the entire team. When you're in golf, you have to compare, or you have to care about mostly your goal. Okay. Your personal goal. Yeah. Okay. Would you agree with that, golfers? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever played a team sport? No. No. Okay. There is a difference. Uh, how about gymnasts? What would you say about team sport? <laughs> what, what would you say about uh, gymnasts in terms of uh, their, uh, is it an individual or a team sport? So you're everybody's core, yeah, it's up for the whole team. So it's both, isn't it? Yeah. It's an individual sport. You're trying to be your own personal best. What you do affects everybody else. That's right. That's right. It's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, composition, isn't it? Okay. What about having the right frame of mind? Dr. McKeel was talking about football team. Even though they lost by three points, they had a, a good pep talk in the dressing room uh, at halftime. At what, what's, what is it about pep talks? What is it about having, why is the mind so important in playing sports? How about you, you, you ran track? Who ran track? She left. She's not she here. Left. You you swam. I swam. What was important about swimming in terms of uh, your state of mind? You had to have the mental power or the mental capacity to see yourself winning and achieving your goals and beating the other other person. And and sometimes your body got tired towards the end of a race and you had to mentally push yourself. It wasn't just physical, it was mental towards the end because you were tired and you had to mentally say, you gotta finish the race. Let's say you had a competitor with whom you had raced, against whom you had raced many times. And it was nip and tuck in terms of winning, losing, winning, losing. If you were preoccupied with that other person's um, uh, progress in, in, in the swim, if you were concerned about what they were doing, what would happen to you? You'll lose. You'll lose. Golfers, do you ever play team, team golf or tournament golf? No. What would you think would happen if Tiger Woods was concerned about another golfer's score? How well would he do? Pardon me? You wouldn't do so good. You wouldn't do so well. Okay. I don't think there's any sport where mental, uh, the right, having the right frame of mind isn't important. It's vital. It's necessary. <coughs> now, all of you are very good at what you do. I saw many of you, if not most of you, received merit badges. And congratulations to all of you who did. Some of you believe that you need to be perfect. Those who believe they must need to be, to be perfect raise their hand. I'm the only one in the room. <laughs> Boy Scouts don't lie, do they? Austin, Austin thinks he has to be perfect at everything. <laughs> he, 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 he gets needs, upset. He needs to be perfect at everything. Yes, yes. He does. It's not nothing to be ashamed about. Also. <laughs> what do you think about that? Where would someone's need to be perfect lead them? What if someone who needs to be perfect, who believes they need to be perfect, makes a mistake? What's going to happen? If someone thinks they need to be perfect and they make a mistake, they'll want to fix it really bad. Say that again. If someone who thinks they would want to be perfect, and they make a mistake. Basically, what they're probably going to want to do is try to fix it. They can't. Because if they need to be perfect, they, they're not allowed to make a mistake. Now, I don't talk about perfection. I talk about excellence. 